Well, this happened in June 2009. People in certain areas in Japan left their homes after a heavy downpour, only to find fish, frogs, and tadpoles everywhere. Fields, roads, lawns, rooftops were littered with these aquatic creatures. One man was shocked to see 13 carp on and around his truck. Apparently, he stopped to count them. No one knows for sure where the bizarre rain came from. But the most popular theory claims that a powerful water spout picked up all these creatures, then it carried them through the upper atmosphere and dropped the animals on the unsuspecting people below. Shelf clouds look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. These ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Breathtaking rainbow clouds appear on top of cotton-like puffy clouds after thunderstorms. The puffy clouds are low-altitude ones. They usually hover at a height of around 6,000 feet. When the water vapor they contains condenses, the resulting droplets act like prisms. This forms multicolored caps over the clouds. Morning glory clouds are extremely rare. They look like massive tubes stretching across the sky. They can snake for more than 600 miles, sitting relatively low. Most researchers agree that these clouds appear when an updraft squeezes through the cloud. This creates the signature rolling appearance. The cool air at the back of the cloud makes it sink downward. The best, but not the only place to see morning glory, is Australia's Gulf of Carpinteria. If you decide to travel there to see these clouds, choose a period from late September to early November. It was 2012 when the sky turned first ominous dark, then yellow. After that, blue gelatinous balls started to fall to the ground. A man from the UK found these balls outside during a hailstorm. He was walking to his garage when he spotted something unusually bright among the whitish hailstones. When researchers examined this jelly rain, they found out the balls were made from the substance used in diapers or potting soil. It's used to absorb liquid. It's still unclear whether the balls fell from the sky, or maybe the melting ice made a few already existing crystals expand in the blink of an eye. Huge white lumps over your head are called mammatus clouds. They can make you believe the sky is falling. Most clouds form when the air rises into the atmosphere, but not mammatus ones. They appear when moist and cool air goes down and mixes with dry air. The result? Unique puffed rice clouds. By the way, if you spot this phenomenon, bad weather is just around the corner. Whoa, mama! Colorful nacreous clouds occur extremely high in the atmosphere. I mean, twice as high as a commercial airplane's cruising altitude. The air at such heights is extremely dry and cold. Ice crystals in nacreous clouds are much smaller than those that form more common clouds. They scatter light in a different way. And this gives the clouds their mother-of-pearl appearance. Blood rain looks more terrifying than any horror movie. But in reality, there's nothing strange or unnatural about this weather phenomenon. People have known about such scarlet-tinted rains since the time of ancient Rome. Sometimes, powerful winds lift red dust into the atmosphere and carry it far, far away to another galaxy. <laughs> In the end, this dust gets mixed with clouds, which colors the rain. By the way, dust from coal mines can make the rain black. Pollen is responsible for yellow rains. And some other kinds of dust can turn the rainwater white. In Australia, it sometimes rains spiders. That's because these creatures can balloon. That's a highly unusual way of traveling. A spider climbs to the very top of a tall tree or shrub. And then it spins several strands of silk. These strands help the spider to be carried away by the wind. It's not easy to spot ballooning. But sometimes, if the weather is especially damp and unpleasant, mass ballooning happens. And then you can't help but pay attention. Millions of spiders set off on a journey to find another place with better conditions. It may seem like it's snowing outside. But no, those are spiders drifting down to the ground. Ever see huge round disks in the sky? Most likely, those were lenticular clouds. 
they usually form over large and high places like mountains or hills. When strong winds bump into some barrier, this creates an air wave. The air kind of wraps around the obstacle, and the higher the barrier is, the colder the air that's rising over it becomes. At some point, the moisture it contains turns into water droplets, and they form the unusual clouds. Lenticular clouds can look like waves, a pizza, or even a stack of pancakes. How yummy! Volcanic tornadoes are possibly one of the most terrifying natural phenomena. When a volcano erupts, it spews red-hot rock and ash high into the air. As for solid lava pieces and hot gases, they travel down the volcano slope. When this flow moves down, some of the trapped gases begin to rise and spin at the same time. They get squeezed by the surrounding air, which makes them spin faster and faster. That's how a volcanic tornado gets born. Luckily, this phenomenon has a very short lifespan. On March 19, 2018, the inhabitants of Alabama had to run for their lives. Otherwise, they would have been hit by huge chunks of ice falling from the sky. It was the infamous hailstorm that caused millions of dollars worth of damage. After the hailstorm, the area looked gloomy. Broken shop windows, smashed car windshields, busted billboards, holes in the roofs. At least, researchers got excited when they found a hailstone near the town of Cullman. This softball-sized monster was more than 5 inches across. No wonder it set a new state record. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust decides to make a snowball. It starts to roll some snow across a snowy area. If it were a real snowball, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But the snow donut center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes it lighter than a snowball, and that's why it also rolls farther. Unfortunately, you just can't go and find snow donuts. They're rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. Moonbows are a much rarer phenomenon than rainbows. They're caused by moonlight rather than direct sunlight and occur only when the moon is near full. Moonbows are dim and often seem to be white, but it's just an illusion. The human eye is just not sensitive enough to catch all the colors. Lightning balls are small, floating spheres of light. They can be orange, yellow, or even red. Sometimes, lightning balls descend from the sky. In other cases, they appear out of nowhere, hovering several feet above the ground. They don't emit any heat or produce very little sound. Lightning balls can bounce off objects. If they come across something electrical, like a TV, they usually disappear with a quiet pop, leaving behind the smell of sulfur. But lightning balls can also start fires or explode. Scientists believe lightning balls might be connected with thunderstorms, but there's no solid proof yet. Fog bows are almost white, pale blue on the inside, and faint red on the outside. You have higher chances of seeing a fog bow over the cold sea or ocean when warm air comes into contact with much colder air. This phenomenon also occurs when the sun is bright, and the fog is thin enough for the light to get through. Pele's hair is thin lava threads. They look golden and pretty, but don't even think about picking them up. Yeah, they can harm you. The wind sometimes catches small droplets of lava coming from active volcanoes. These droplets get carried miles away from the vent. They get stretched into super-thin glass wires, also called hair lava. Some strands can be as long as 6 feet. In March 2018, those who looked up in the sky in northern Nevada saw one of the rarest and most bizarre clouds ever. It was a horseshoe cloud. Such a vortex happens when a flat cloud travels over a column of warm, rising air. This air not only gives the cloud its impressive shape, but also adds some spin to its movement. But you've got to be quick! Horseshoe clouds are very fleeting and usually last for only several minutes. Frost flowers bloom on young sea ice in the Arctic Ocean or on thin lake ice. They're fragile and delicate ice crystals. These structures grow during temperature changes. They draw moisture from the ice surface and rise, capturing bacteria and salt. You can find frost flowers in Antarctica, too. But wherever these crystals grow, people know disappointingly very little about them. Still, 
They're awfully pretty. Ah, Kiev. You've been dreaming of getting here for years. Getting out your trusty camera, you start taking pictures of the cathedrals, aviation museum, and the Dnipro River, when, without warning, there's an enormous boom behind you. Turning around, you see something towering in the distance. It looks like a gigantic explosion. Uh Uh-oh, time to leave fast! In June 2020, what the people of Kiev were looking at was an anvil cloud, a rare storm formation in the sky. Forming when strong air currents carry water vapor upwards, the air expands and spreads out as it hits the bottom of the stratosphere. It pushes the dense cloud into the cool anvil shape you see, and sometimes it even gets to be a mushroom. Anvil clouds produce some of the most dangerous lightning of all storms, one that's called a bolt out of the blue. This lightning strike seems to magically come out of the blue sky with the storm being many miles away. This type of bolt comes from the top of the anvil and can be 10 times more powerful than a typical lightning strike. People got so frightened after witnessing a giant cloud just 60 miles away, thinking something terrible must have happened. The locals had pictures of the large billow on social media before officials could explain what was going on. Authorities managed to calm everyone's fears by informing them it was nothing more than a natural phenomenon, and a beautiful one at that. Before dissipating, these clouds typically stay in one area, regardless of how strong the wind is. Touring around the northern tip of Queensland, Australia, way away from those creepy crawlies, it's time to take a break and relax at the beach. Getting comfortable, you notice a great big shadow passes over you, then another, and yet another. Looking up, this weird weather is simply stunning. The clouds are called morning glory, a very rare type of cloud that almost seems to roll across the sky, looking like a massive tube. These clouds can measure up to 600 miles long, even appearing in large groups as well. This phenomenon is the result of an updraft pushing through the cloud, creating a rolling appearance, while moist cooler air at the back causes them to sink downward. Southern India, between July and September 2001. People witnessed one of the strangest weather phenomenon in recorded history. The rain was red. What many would have thought to be a typical rainstorm left them shocked. The color was bright enough to stain clothes. There were other colors too, such as green, yellow, brown, and even black. In the middle of a monsoon, red rain started to fall, and did so periodically for several weeks. Researchers have found this unusual rain is stained either by dust or algae, so don't try to catch any on your tongue. Scientists aren't entirely sure how the algae got all the way up there. This does make events like this a little unsettling. Like to take a bubble bath to relax after an exhausting day, but taking too long to fill the bathtub? Problem solved! Head to any coastline after a big storm and take a dip. Foamy tides aren't native to any one place or location. They can be formed anywhere in the world. They're most likely to happen along rocky coastlines, like the coast of San Francisco, Northern Ireland, or the Mooloolaba, Australia. Each coast has differing conditions forming the sea foams. If you scoop up seawater into a glass and look at it closely, you'll see it's full of tiny particles. Many things like plants, chemicals, and lots of salt and minerals create the perfect formula for foam. When powerful currents and wind mix it all together, we get something that resembles a cappuccino top floating on top of the water. When freezing temperatures hit orchards in Michigan, all kinds of unusual things happen. Like ghost apples. No, they're not going to scare you at all. But if you plan on sneaking away one winter to find one, be warned. Everything has to be perfect for this to occur, and it's going to be freezing cold. This is actually a rare weather phenomenon caused by having the apples freeze where they are with rain coating the fruit in a thin layer of ice. The apples then thaw and leak out like applesauce, 
leaving just the beautiful ice shell behind. The Catatumbo River in Venezuela might be the most electric place in the world, with nearly 300 storm days per year. The lightning storms are so consistent, they're predicted for three months in advance. During the wet season in October, you might see 30 lightning flashes in a single minute, a truly shocking experience. With each bolt having the energy to power a single light bulb for six months, the impressive display could power all of Venezuela forever. At sunset, strong winds flow around the three surrounding mountains, forming storm clouds over the water. As the water droplets of humid air collide with ice crystals from the cold air, it produces the static charges that cause the lightning storms nearly every night. If that wasn't bad enough, some storms have lightning above them as well. Try to take a picture of this one. Jellyfish lightning sprites are electrical discharges high in Earth's atmosphere. They're associated with powerful thunderstorms, but they have nothing to do with rain. These sprites occur 30 to 50 miles up in the sky, in the mesosphere. Artificial lights at night make it a lot harder to see this faint lightning. If you spot one, it'll look tiny, but can be well over 30 miles wide. The red sprites are a type of cold plasma discharge above a thundercloud. They're the balance of the lightning charges between the storm clouds and the ground below. Don't try to find this type of donut at your favorite bakery. It won't be there. Snow donuts are one of the rarest meteorological sites to see, with perfect weather conditions needed just to create them. Found in any snow-covered mountain area, like the Rocky Mountains, the wind, temperature, snow, ice, and moisture have to all work together for us to see these phenomenal rings. A thin layer of wet snow on the ground. Under that layer, ice or powdered snow. Then, a strong enough breeze to roll the donut down a hill, just like a snowball. Once it stops rolling, it can be the size of a baseball or as large as a car tire. It all depends on how strong the wind is. A newly formed snow donut won't stay around for very long, so hurry up with that camera! Watching the sunset over the horizon, the beautiful purples and pink overhead are nothing compared to the three suns you see in front of you. Wow, since when did Earth get three suns? These phantom stars sometimes appearing beside the sun are called sun dogs. Maybe they're called that because they're kind of dogging the actual sun? <laughs> sun dogs often appear as colored areas of light at the same height above the horizon as the sun. They're mostly observed on a ring or halo, where ice crystals best reflect the light. There are also moon dogs that appear alongside the moon and are formed by lunar light passing through ice crystals, though these aren't seen nearly as much as their daytime partners. Taking photos in the wild, you finally found the perfect spot to take that dream shot. The crystal clear water, the pines, the mountains, and the flying saucer. Wait, a flying saucer? Oh, aliens are here! <clears throat> you might be thinking this if you saw a saucer-shaped cloud. I'm not even going to try to pronounce their name, though. Put that on the screen, please. Wait, just kidding. It's Alto Cumulus Lenticularis. Aren't you impressed? These are really just unusual cloud formations over mountaintops. When moist air flows over a mountain, a wave is created if the temperature difference is perfect. As the air passes through the wave, evaporation occurs and a series of these clouds may form into an oval shape. Not aliens at all. Whew. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Well. People who have experienced these clouds say they look like they're coming down from the sky. Mammatus clouds look like giant white lumpy marshmallows, but it might be hard to toast these ones. These weird fluffy clouds can extend hundreds of miles in any direction, remaining visible for short periods at the bottom of anvil or other thunderstorm clouds. The strange bubble shapes are formed from turbulence within the storm itself creating an uneven cloud base and appearing anywhere in the world. 
mammatus clouds form when moist air sinks into dry air. The air must be cooler than its surroundings, cooled with ice, or be heavy with water. Kwajan Volcano in Indonesia is not your ordinary lava-belching mountain. Instead of producing black smoke and red lava, as most volcanoes do, this eccentric guy lets out a blue flame, an electric blue lava. This phenomenon occurs because the volcano contains some of the highest levels of sulfur in the world. And when the sulfuric gases interact with scorching air and get lit by the molten lava, they start to turn blue. Unfortunately, you can see this mesmerizing sight only at night, but you can smell it all day long. By the way, the world's largest acid lake is also located inside this crater. The Dead Sea has a high concentration of salt and minerals compared to other seas, even though it's technically a lake. Swimming is almost impossible, but people go there for the natural chemicals for the body. Floating on the surface is a great way to relax. This ancient body of water got its name because no macroscopic organisms can live there since it's 9.6 times saltier than oceans. Only a few bacteria and fungi can be found enjoying the salt. It's also Earth's lowest elevation on land at 1,400 feet below sea level. An underground crystal cave exists in Mexico, and it looks like some interstellar world. It's roughly 1,000 feet beneath the surface, with each spike measuring up to 35 feet in length and weighing up to 55 tons. These are some of the largest crystals in the world. Los Cantar Beach is an endless strand of white sand dunes in azure water. But don't let the tropical vibes fool you. It's located in Scotland. That's why it mostly looks like this during May and June only. In December, the place gets only an average of one hour of sunshine per day making it way more dramatic and monochrome. The Georgia Guide Stones is a collection of giant stones in a star pattern. It has inscriptions in eight languages, including Hindi, Chinese, and Swahili. It also has an astronomical calendar finished in 1980 and was built the last centuries. No one knows who built it or why. All the way over in sunny California is Sequoia National Park, home to the giant forest. It's been around for thousands of years. More than 8,000 of these colossal trees rule the land, including 10 of the largest living plants in the world. The General Sherman Sequoia is estimated to be up to 2,700 years old and is recognized as the world's largest known living tree by volume. The famous stone heads of Easter Island have been around for hundreds of years. No one knows exactly why they were built. Some scientists think that local people believe the statues would make the soil more fertile. Soil analysis proved the heads did their job well. It's the best agricultural spot on the island. The chemical composition of the ancient hot springs in Pamukkale, Turkey, makes the water pouring over the edge look magical. They're not only good for cleansing your body, but the mind too. All the way in Saudi Arabia is a rock sliced perfectly in the middle with two pieces sitting parallel. What makes al Nasla so unique is that it wasn't artificially done, but is a result of nature's work over the years. Now this glacier may look like someone dropped tons of red paint in the middle of Antarctica, but it's actually the natural color. Blood falls is a result of extreme salted water mixed with iron oxide, giving out this eerie vibe in the middle of nowhere. In early May 2018, New England observed one of the scariest and most dangerous phenomena ever, a super long track tornado. The frightening natural phenomenon started not far from Charleston, New Hampshire, and traveled toward the town of Webster in Merrimack County. It took the tornado 33 minutes to cover 36 miles and become the third on the list of the longest track tornadoes in New England. In the Philippines, you can swim in some of the most crystal-clear waters and discover an underwater world below you in the province of Palawan. The municipality of Koran has white sandy beaches with many small boats riding through the many amazing sceneries. Tristan da Cunha is a small volcanic archipelago in the Atlantic, with the only neighboring cities of Buenos Aires, Argentina, and Cape Town, South Africa. It takes seven days by ship to get to this unique place. If you want to escape from the rest of the world, staying with the 280 locals will make you feel like you're away from everything. 
During the first week of January 2018, unusually cold weather in the Northeast United States froze the Atlantic Ocean in North Falmouth, Massachusetts. What's more, the ocean was frozen so thoroughly that people were walking on the waves. Now, that's obviously something you don't see every day. Red sand is what makes this beach unique and why tourists flock to Tianjin, China. A red-colored plant called a sueda salsa dwells in the saltwater. The whole beach is covered in red, with only the top layer of the sea visible. If there ever was a thing that said, I defy gravity out loud, it's the stone of Davasco in Argentina. The huge 300-ton boulder stands precariously on the edge of a cliff and rocks a little bit from side to side in the wind. People even checked it by putting glass bottles under one of its edges. They exploded with another movement of the rock. Unfortunately today, you can't see this wonder of nature as it was a century ago. In 1912, the boulder suddenly dropped from its perch, which it had occupied for literally hundreds of years. The people of the nearby town of Tandil were so sad about this event that 95 years later, in 2007, they decided to restore the stone. They made a plastic replica of the rock and put it on the same spot and even in the same position. So even today, coming by Tandil, you can see its famous balancing boulder. More of a symbol now, of course, because it's no longer rocking and only weighs 9 tons, but instantly recognizable nonetheless. Socotra is an alien-like island off the coast of Yemen in the Indian Ocean with one of the most unique trees ever seen. It's called the dragon tree, and it can only be found on this amazing island. In 2008, it was labeled as a World Heritage Site. If you ever see a tight-burning column of air, don't panic, it's not the end of the world. The creepy combination of whirlwind sounds and scorching inferno means that you have crossed paths with a fire tornado, also known as fire twister or fire whirl. This dangerous phenomenon occurs mostly during wildfires. These fires create a big area of super hot air just above the ground. When this scorching air gets mixed with the cooler air higher up, it results in a whirlwind that churns up burning debris and flames. The most powerful fire nados can stretch hundreds of feet into the air. The House of Mystery in Gold Hill, Oregon, amazes its visitors with gravity-defying effects. You can't stand straight there, always leaning to the side and having to hold on to something for balance. Balls roll upwards. There's also a broom that stands perfectly still wherever you put it, unlike virtually everything else in the shack. The local Native American tribes called this place the Forbidden Ground, even before the house was built there, and they avoid approaching it. The owners of the shack, though, decided to turn it into an attraction, and they succeeded. They created an atmosphere of mystery around the place, and spread the news about it in newspapers and later on the internet, and voila! A perfect anomaly is made. In fact, it's no more than a curiosity. A human-made optical illusion that tricks your eyes and other senses. Now, if you travel to the Philippines, Indonesia, or Papua New Guinea, you'll have a chance to see some of the most unusual and cheerful trees in the world. The trunk of the rainbow eucalyptus looks as if it had been painted orange, green, red, purple, yellow, brown, blue, hey, you name it. Some trees are so bright that they seem artificial. The rainbow eucalyptus regularly sheds strips of bark, which reveals a bright green layer underneath. A bit later, this green layer gradually changes its color. And since the shedding happens at a different time in different places on the trunk, the tree starts to look multicolored and very attractive. Yemen is home to the oldest skyscrapers in the world and the oldest metropolis. The ancient city of Shabam is considered to be the Manhattan of the desert due to the collection of mud buildings popping out of the desert floor. It used to be a caravan stop during ancient times. Now picture this. You're watching a volcano erupt, which is a scary view by itself. But suddenly, you notice ominous bright flashes lighting up the sky over the volcano. It takes the nightmarishness of the experience to a whole new level. One causes static electricity, which occurs when dense ash particles rub together not very high above the ground. The other source of volcanic lightning is high above the surface near the stratosphere, where chaotically moving ice crystals set free powerful jolts. 
Salar del Uni feels like you're standing on top of a large mirror, but it's actually a salt flat of more than 4,000 square miles. It's located in Bolivia, South America's highest elevated country. This natural mirror is a remnant of prehistoric lakes that had evaporated a long time ago. Even though it may look flat, GPS technology proved that some of the landscape has some little defaults that are all less than an inch small. The place is so bogged that it has around 10 billion tons of salt. If you get there at the right time, some of the nearby lakes overflow with a small layer of water, which acts as the mirror of the sky. Many locals extract salt and lithium from there. Don't forget to pass by the world's first salt hotel when you visit. You can find a real rainbow mountain in Peru. Scientists still can't explain it. The colorful peak is hard to reach, but seeing the blue, red, green, yellow, and pink colors in nature is something to remember. Now, what looks like frozen flying saucers is, in fact, pockets of highly flammable and combustible methane gas. Trapped underwater, it forms psychedelic landscapes and stunning patterns. Typical for northern lakes, such as Lake Abraham in Alberta, Canada, these bubbles appear when dead animals, leaves, and plants fall into the water and get consumed by bacteria. These bacteria later excrete methane gas. Wow, I can smell it from here! In late March 2018, Eastern Europe witnessed an event as beautiful as it was spooky. Skiers glided down tangerine slopes under the red-tinted sky. Puzzled and excited, people described this experience as walking on Mars or skiing down sand dunes. But however mysterious this phenomenon seems, it has a disappointingly simple explanation. The sponsor of the extraterrestrial landscape was a powerful sandstorm that had arrived from the Sahara Desert. This storm had brought along dust, sand, and pollen particles that colored the snow orange. It's not a one-time natural phenomenon. Meteorologists say that orange snow covers the lands of Eastern Europe at least once every five years. Meanwhile, don't eat the orange snow. On February 20th and 21st of 2018, people in the northeastern part of the U.S. experienced one of the most extraordinary weather events of recent times, and it was a heat wave. Yep, in February. In fact, it was the most impressive winter heat wave since official weather records started in the 1800s. For example, in Freiburg, Maine, people were taking off their coats after the temperature had risen to a baffling 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In Fitchburg, Massachusetts, confused people put on sandals when they saw the temperature outside 80 degrees. The same was happening in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where the temperature reached 83, and in Wells, Maine, where the thermometer showed 77 degrees. Now, around 11,000 years ago, in present-day Turkey, with no cities or metal tools whatsoever, some incredibly skilled craftsmen completed Gobikli Tepe, how they managed to chip and lift limestone blocks three times as heavy as a T-Rex, and what they symbolize is still unknown. Ooh. One mind-blowing fact about Devil's Tower in Wyoming, USA, is that scientists can't explain how it came to existence in the first place. You see, it's an 867-foot rock formation with walls so steep they're basically vertical. This piece of stone just arose amid the rolling plains of Wyoming with nothing like it for miles and miles around. So how is it that such a flat landscape could have suddenly given birth to something so tall? Theories abound, but nobody has the answer yet. Croatia's Plitvica Lakes National Park is a major tourist attraction and a world heritage site, with many unique animals and plants teeming around. It looks like an epic movie set, with infinite waterfalls flowing from every direction and the clear lakes all around. In the mid-1980s, a scuba diver discovered the Yanaguni Monument off the coast of Japan. Scientists are positive this collection of structures is thousands of years old but they still can't decide if it's natural or man-made. In case it proves to be an ancient city, the new mystery is what lost civilization built it and how did it make it to the bottom of the sea? The shape and formations of these rocks aren't a result of some human's work. They were created by intense volcanic eruptions. Scientists are still confused why the Giant's Causeway in Ireland is shaped in such a weird way. 
Back in 1812, for an unknown reason, an English farmer paid a local painter to remove tons of soil on a hillside and fill the contours with chalk. The painter ran away with the money, so the farmer had to pay a second time to get the Alton Barn's white horse finished. Black Falls in Iceland get their name from the dark lava columns surrounding it. The base of the waterfall has sharp rocks. The entire structure was the inspiration for Icelandic architecture seen in some of their famous buildings. You can see hair ice in the forest on a humid winter night. Resembling cotton candy or a white hair wig, unusual ice crystals grow on rotting wood. Unfortunately, this beauty melts as soon as the sun comes up. Only recently have scientists discovered what creates hair eyes. All this time it was, are you ready? Fungus. Yep. It allows the ice to form super thin hairs and helps them to support this form throughout the night. When this particular type of fungus isn't present, instead of fragile hair, ice forms a crust-like structure. Now, one of the most common causes of wildfires is lightning from thunderstorms. But have you ever heard of a wildfire that triggered a thunderstorm? Well, now you know. It happened on May 11, 2018, not far from Amarillo, Texas. Then, the super-powerful Mallard Fire not only created a massive dense cloud high in the air, its heat also caused a violent thunderstorm that later dumped tons of quarter-sized hailstones 60 miles away in Wheeler County, Texas. Carhenge is the weirdest landmark of Nebraska. Its author studied the real Stonehenge and created his own version out of old cars as a tribute to his father. Some cars stand like monoliths. Others are connected into arches. When asked why he did all this, the creator of the construction said, why not? Another Stonehenge lookalike was found on the bottom of Lake Michigan in 2007. There's a group of rocks in a circle and carvings of a mastodon. This beast ceased existing over 10,000 years ago, so the carving has to be older than that. Its location is kept secret from the public. Good luck finding it! Canada's Hudson Bay is probably the only place in the world where gravity is indeed lower than anywhere else on the planet. Even skeptics can't smirk at it because the difference has been measured with precision equipment. So, does it mean that the gravity here is as low as, say, on the moon? Eh, unfortunately, or is it luckily, I'm not sure yet. The difference is minuscule. The exact value is 0.005 or 1 200th of a percent. You won't be able to feel it even if you try your hardest, but it's still there. Scientists say this anomaly exists because of the ice sheet that covered the area about 10,000 years ago. It compressed the rocks so much that they still can't fully recover, shifting the gravitational field in Hudson Bay. Sometime in the future, though, the gravity will return to normal in this area as well. In 2010, fossilized fish were uncovered 250 miles west of the Nile River, where the Sahara Desert was as arid as ever. This chance finding led scientists to believe there could have been a sea where the Sierra is now. So they conducted a geological survey of the area, and it yielded unexpected results. They found evidence of something huge under the sands, and it wasn't part of any sea at all. For several months, the research continued with GPS equipment on land, and later, when all the ground data was collected, scientists took a look at the area from a satellite. The view was astounding. It turned out there was an enormous basin underneath the desert, with another, smaller one nearby. Along the shores of these basins, ancient human settlements had been found previously, and now the researchers finally had the answer as to why exactly they had chosen those spots to live. There had been a lake of impressive proportions, over 42,000 square miles of fresh water in total, about half the size of Lake Michigan. You feel some rumbling from below. No, it's not your tummy. It's low and ominous. You look up and see strange lights hanging above the ground. They look like shimmering balls of light hovering high up in the sky. Your throat goes dry and you gulp. That's what they call the earthquake lights. This phenomenon is poorly understood, but witnesses say they've seen it in different shapes and sizes. It could be in the form of light balls, sheet lightning, streamers, 
and a steady glow in the sky. Soon after, a strong earthquake follows. Scientists can't explain why those lights appear, and they don't always do either. Some believe that's a reaction of underground gases released into the atmosphere. Sure enough, an earthquake begins. But lucky you, it's not as strong as you expected. The ground is shaking, but you even manage to keep your balance. It stops as abruptly as it began, and you walk home. On the way home, you see a flash and hear a whip crack. Lightning has struck a lone tree near where you just stood. It's caught on fire, and there's a column of flames rising to the sky. Still no rain, and the pillar becomes taller and taller. Have you heard of such a thing as a fire tornado? These phenomena occur when the wind is caught in a circle close to the ground because of the difference in air pressure. Such mini tornadoes are usually easy to notice. Small rubble, dust, sand, and leaves rise into the air and start flying in rapid circles. But then, if there's a source of fire nearby, the funnel can catch it and blow it stronger like bellows. The flames go round and round, reaching ever higher and eventually creating a swirling, blazing tower. Luckily, fire tornadoes are short-lived and don't normally cause much damage. But don't try to hide from the storm under that tree. You can find this unusual plant in Florida and in some parts of the Caribbean coast. Externally, it doesn't look special at all. A great trunk, green leaves, and fruit similar to small apples. What you must remember is never to pluck these apples and never stand next to the tree, especially if it's raining. This is the manchineel tree which is considered the most dangerous in the world. Its trunk, bark, branches, and fruit contain poisonous juice. One drop of this corrosive acidic liquid can harm your skin a lot. The tree can secrete this juice, and if you accidentally touch it, you risk burning your hand. When it rains, water droplets fall on the tree and mix with the poison. Water can also bounce off the bark and get on your skin. That's why you shouldn't stand nearby either. There are almost no other shrubs or mushrooms growing around. Animals avoid these trees, and people don't chop them and don't pluck the fruit. You can't make a bonfire from their branches. Burning wood emits poisonous smoke that can damage your eyes. Locals know this tree well, but tourists and travelers might accidentally get harmed. That's why most manchineel trees are marked with paint or have a warning sign. In western Venezuela, locals living close to the Catatumbo River aren't afraid of lightning because they see it almost every single night. It starts at around 7 o'clock and doesn't stop until dawn. The everlasting Catatumbo lightning did one stop for a few months, from January to March 2010. It was probably due to drought, or maybe the charge ran out. In 1991, a scientist suggested that the phenomenon happens because of cold and warm air currents meeting in the area. Another theory is that the lightning could be due to the presence of uranium in the bedrock. Not all lightning happens inside clouds. There's a rare phenomenon called a dirty thunderstorm. The lightning happens above a volcano. The most famous is in Japan. It erupts almost every day and spits black clouds high into the air. So it's super scary volcano clouds, plus lightning. Whoa! Regular lightning happens during a storm when ice crystals bump into each other. In a dirty thunderstorm, bits of volcanic ash collide, create friction, and spark up the sky. In the hottest and one of the driest places on Earth, Africa's Donakil Desert, temperatures often rise above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The out-of-this-world landscape has many active volcanoes and geysers that spit out toxic gases like chlorine and sulfur. The vibrantly green, electric blue, and yellow waters are all rain and seawater warmed up by magma. One wrong step here, and you'd be gone for good. This happened in June 2009. People in certain areas in Japan left their homes after a heavy downpour only to find fish, frogs, and tadpoles everywhere. Fields, roads, lawns, and rooftops were littered with these aquatic creatures. One man was shocked to see 13 carp on and around his truck. Apparently, he stopped to count them. No one knows for sure where the bizarre rain came from, but the most popular theory claims that a powerful water spout picked up all these creatures. 
Then it carried them through the upper atmosphere and dropped the animals on the unsuspecting people below. And now, welcome to Abraham Lake in Canada. It's completely frozen. You step onto the transparent ice and look down at what lies beneath. No fish, just some mysterious frozen bubbles. They look like small clouds frozen in ice, or jellyfish who forgot to pack a winter jacket. There are thousands of these little bubbles made up of methane. But don't try to dig a hole in the ice to touch it. Methane is highly flammable. It's created by methane-producing bacteria that eats leaves, grass, insects, or any other organic stuff that gets into the lake. When the methane touches the frozen water, it turns into tens of thousands of frozen little balls. When the ice melts, they burst open and sizzle. Similar lakes can be found near some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the size of the bubbles can reach several times the size of hot air balloons. Beautiful for sure, but not exactly safe. The next shocking lake is in Indonesia, the island of Java. You come to a majestic volcano, overgrown with grass and trees. The volcano seems to be asleep, but smoke is pouring out of it. You climb to the summit. Exhausted, tired, sweaty, you're ready to cool off. Nice work, you made it to the top. You look into the mouth of the volcano. Hmm, no boiling lava, just a beautiful, bright, turquoise lake down there. It looks like an oasis. Perfect time for a refreshing dip. You run down and get ready to jump in. But that's not water, that's acid! Sulfurous gases get into the lake from under the volcano. The lake itself is full of metals. When the gases touch them, they form that beautiful turquoise water. I mean, acid. Better head back to the nearest village, rest, and come back at night when it's cooler. In the dark, the lake seems to glow. Right above it, you see light-filled, exploding little clouds. The sulfurous gases rise out of the lake, combine with the air, and flash bright blue. Still, don't get too close. The sea turns sinister red, and no living being can survive in it. Must be some dark magic. In fact, it's tiny algae that spread uncontrollably, giving the water this specific tint called the red tide. They have toxins that destroy sea mammals, birds, and turtles, as well as creatures that feed on them. For humans, contact with it ends in breathing problems or seafood poisoning. Sometimes even huge ships sink in the open seas for no visible reason. That reason is often the pockets of bubbles that underwater volcanoes produce even while they're sleeping. Those productive magma factories are hidden under 8,500 feet of water. When they wake up, they act just like land volcanoes, and they can cause destructive tsunamis. This tree looks like a bottle. No wonder it's called the bottle tree. It grows in Namibia and attracts many tourists. But don't get too close to the tree because it's one of the most dangerous on Earth. Milky juice flows inside the trunk. It's highly toxic to the human body. On the bright side, though, the trees have beautiful pink-white leaves with a red core. There's a tree growing in Western Australia that was once used as a prison. A cell for criminals existed inside the Boab prison tree for a long time. People were usually kept there temporarily, just for one night. After that, they were taken to their final destination. The prison was built more than 1,500 years ago and has been perfectly preserved to this day. Tourists visiting this place can sneak a peek inside. You're hiking in the wilderness, looking for a safe spot to set up camp. All you can hear are leaves and branches crackling under your footsteps. Some squirrels are running up a tree over there. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. You notice something weird in the distance in between the trees. It kind of looks like a concrete structure of some kind. Weird. At this point, you're at least 20 miles deep into the woods, and there are no nearby towns or villages, as far as you know. So you decide to go off the trail with your friends to get a closer look. But as you get nearer, you realize that it's leading to nowhere. Hmm, what's it doing here in the middle of literally nowhere? And it doesn't even lead to anything. You put on your Sherlock Holmes cap and investigate. So, maybe there used to be an old house or mansion here that collapsed over the years, and the only thing left is a staircase? But, weirdly enough, after circling the bizarre structure, 
you realize there's no trace of any ruins or even foundations. It's like someone just sliced a staircase off their house, cake style, and plopped it here for no reason. Okay? You and your friends aren't really into getting a whole lot closer. Something feels wrong. The longer you look at this weird structure, the more you feel a super creepy presence. Something tells you you should probably leave the area as fast as possible. As weird as this sounds, discoveries of random staircases illogically found in the woods are surprisingly common. Some are made of wood, others of brick or stone. Some look ancient, while others look like they were finished yesterday. The one thing they all have in common, they all lead to absolutely nowhere, and they're all found in super mysterious locations. One of the most famous ones is in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. A long, medieval-looking staircase made of stones with Roman arches in the middle of the woods. It's believed to have been part of Madame Antoinette Sherry's castle. She was a big singer back in Paris. The castle dates back about 100 years, and it was later discovered again in 1962. This time, there was nothing but a staircase. Another mysterious ancient staircase dates back to 9,000 years ago. It's in a forest in Italy. It looks like a series of stairs that lead to a tiny platform at the top. Now, why go through all the trouble of building the thing if it leads to nowhere? Well, some scientists think it could have been some sort of ritual tower, but your guess is as good as theirs. There's an anomaly in the Indian Ocean known as the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, or IOGL. It produces the largest distorting natural gravitational force in the world. Heavy mineral deposits, many deep-sea trenches, and magma reservoirs disturb the magnetic field in this area. Earth's gravity changes in different places around the planet. It allows researchers to look for patterns and figure out what's happening beneath the surface. Higher gravity fields usually mean denser materials below and vice versa. Some scientists believe that the anomaly might be a dent in the planet's mantle that is working its way up to the crust. The Nihau Island actually rejects the fruits of today's advancements. There are no cars in sight since the locals get around on foot or by bicycles. No wonder their legs have great definition. They thrive without running water, internet, or shops. The only school on the entire island is powered by solar energy with a backup generator. And what's awesome is that it's the only school in the state that's powered by the sun. Being a resident of the island, the local explains some ground rules the permanent residents must abide by. If they do break these rules, they can be evicted. Now, not far from Bangkok, in northeastern Thailand, there's a 75-million-year-old rock formation. These rocks look like three whales swimming together. The beautiful design created by nature became known as Three Whales Rock. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert. But the land was changing. Gradually, sandstone got pulled apart by the movements of tectonic plates and erosion. That's how these spectacular formations were created. If you decide to explore the system of trails around Three Whales Rock, you'll find waterfalls and an abundance of fauna and flora there. Located on Gamal and Gaiden peninsulas, these expansive pit holes were discovered in 2014. They seem to be still changing and evolving. The pits grow wider, and people find them more often. Of course, there's no shortage of theories about how they appeared. Suggestions range from meteorite impacts to the activity of other civilizations. But the most common explanation is that methane gas reacted to water molecules after the planet's permafrost started to melt. This resulted in bubbles of methane bursting through the ice. The craters could be thousands of years old, but nobody knows for sure. You're driving to the state of New Mexico, to the small town of Taos. 2% of the locals hear a strange buzzing in the air every day. Some residents believe the sound is somehow connected with technologies used by guests from other galaxies. Ooh. Also, there is a theory that something sinister lives in the town. They say Taos is cursed. An evil spirit or a phantom punishes people for something their ancestors did in the past. Scientists still can't explain the nature of this sound. 
Another theory says it's caused by unusual acoustics of the location, while others think the buzzing is a hallucination. Some can hear it because everybody talks about something, and our minds create an illusion of the sound that doesn't really exist. The sound isn't the same for everyone, either. For some, it's a low hum. For others, it's more of a buzzing sound. But this is not the only place where you can hear the strange noises. It's called the hum, and people worldwide claim to have heard it. Some dwellers of a small village in Scotland describe it as a low, thick hum. Well, some residents of Florida heard a similar sound, too. It's not exactly known where this phenomenon appeared, but the first time the media started talking about it was in the 1970s in England. Also, there are written records of a mysterious buzzing dating back almost 200 years. According to some estimates, only about 2% of people on the planet can hear the hum. Perhaps their ears pick up some low-frequency waves, or the reason is something else entirely. Maybe, just maybe, they hear humming because the person doing it doesn't know the words to the song. Yeah, that joke is also 200 years old. A volcano in Indonesia spews bright blue lava and produces electric blue and purple flames. This phenomenon occurs because the volcano has some of the highest levels of sulfur in the world. You can also know you're near it by its foul stench. But I digress. And when sulfuric gases interact with scorching hot air and get lit by the molten lava, they turn blue. You can also find the world's largest acid lake inside this crater. Yep, it's a real stinker. Underwater rivers and lakes are called brine pools for a reason. High salinity makes the water in them denser than the seawater around. That's why it sinks to the bottom, forming rivers and lakes. Those have waves of their own, and these waves can sometimes lap up against the shorelines. If you went down there in the submarine, it would easily float on the surface of a brine pool. But without a submarine, swimming in such a lake would be too risky. They contain too much toxic methane and hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, I'd pass on that too. But hey, be my guest! Cave of Crystals in Mexico is home to the world's most unique crystal formations. Thanks to super-rare conditions in the cave, crystals there grow to unbelievable sizes. The air inside is incredibly humid. The water contains tons of minerals that boost the growth of the Milky White Giants. Some of them are longer than telephone poles. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust starts to roll some snow across a snowy area, as if making a snowball. If it was a real thing, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But a snow donut center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes the thing lighter than a snowball. That's also why it rolls further. Unfortunately, snow donuts are rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. The Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is probably one of the most bizarre-looking places you'll ever see. It's dotted with neon-colored hot springs, lava pools, and vast salt flats. You've got to be especially careful there. Toxic gases are swirling over hydrothermal fields, and many pools are super acidic. So, mm, don't go swimming. Until at least 30 minutes after lunch. <laughs> Just kidding. And finally, there's nothing mysterious about 28,000 rubber ducks found in the sea in 1992. That's when a ship transporting bath toys got lost in the ocean while traveling from Hong Kong to the U.S. Some of these ducks are still floating in the ocean several decades later. They've been spotted in South America, Alaska, Hawaii, and even Australia. And they make bath time lots of fun. Ooh, rubber ducky! Hey, ever heard of a fire rainbow? Yeah, me neither. How about a circumhorizontal arc? Didn't think so, but just so you know, they're one and the same thing. At first glance, it looks like a painting, or like a rainbow-colored splash in the sky. Despite the name, they have nothing in common with either fire or rain. This phenomenon happens on rare occasions when the sun shines through a particular type of ice cloud formation. The rainbow halos are just as unique. 
Again, a specific type of ice crystals and clouds needs to be present for the surface of the Earth to bend light from the Sun into a perfect ring. The same thing can happen with moonlight. The only difference will be that moon halos are usually white, and sun halos can be rainbow-colored. When visiting regions with high altitudes, you may be one of the lucky people to stumble upon penitentes. They're basically naturally formed ice spikes. For them to be formed, they need a really cold and elevated environment where the air is dry. The sunlight turns ice directly into vapor rather than melting it into water. And that's why these blades of snow and ice start to pop up on the surface of the Earth. As cute as they may be, they can end up as tall as 15 feet. Now, what happens when small individual droplets of lava meet the wind? Pele's hair, basically. Let me explain. The word Pele comes from an ancient Hawaiian symbol for volcanoes. Whenever the wind picks up little drops of lava, it stretches them into hair-like strands, similar to the process of glass wire creation. These delicate strands can stretch as far as 6 feet. On rare occasions, it can rain without any clouds. But does it really? Let's look at the science behind this rare phenomenon. It's sometimes called a sun shower, just because it looks like the rain is falling straight from the sun. Let's be clear though, there is no way rain can ever come down directly from a star. Rain clouds are at a bit of a distance from that specific location. With sun rays being angled, the clouds become out of sight. Add a little wind to blow the rain in your direction, and ta-da! You get sun showers. Located in Bolivia is a place called Salar de Uni. It's the largest salt flat in the world. It's also the home of half of the world's lithium, which is a crucial component for making batteries. But what else is so special about this place? Well, whenever the rain season comes, it turns this piece of flat land into a perfectly reflective mirror lake. What comes to your mind when you hear about the Blood Falls? A horror movie? <laughs> well, they are merely a series of waterfalls located in one of the driest regions of Antarctica. They emerge from an underground lake filled with a special kind of bacteria. These little organisms use sulfates as fuel instead of sugars, which makes them very intriguing for scientists. The water contained in this lake is so full of iron that it basically just rusts when it meets the air. Hence, the reddish color of the waterfall, which also gives it its trademark name. Okay, we all know the song, but it's not really made up. There is actually such a thing called a desert rose. It's not a plant, though, but a unique form of the mineral gypsum. It develops in dry sandy places that can occasionally flood. This constant switching between a wet and dry environment lets the gypsum crystals emerge between grains of sand, trapping them and forming a rose-like shape. Ever heard of the Eye of Sahara? Scientists are still trying to figure out how it was formed. You can only see it if you fly above it, but it's basically a naturally formed dome that dates back to approximately 100 million years ago. And no, I wasn't around then. It has a rough diameter of 25 miles and consists of a bunch of concentric rings. The biggest one, or the central area, measures about 19 miles in diameter. Astronauts were some of the first people to notice it, and it's been studied ever since. In fact, even to this day, when landing in Florida, they know they're almost home when they see the Eye of Sahara. One of the most beautifully colored trees in the world is located in the Philippines and Indonesia. It's called the Rainbow Eucalyptus. It got its name because of its bark that switches colors and peels away as the tree ages. The bright green bark is the youngest, as it contains a substance called chlorophyll, usually found in leaves. It then switches to purple and then to the color red. And finally, it turns brown as it grows and loses the chlorophyll. Now, don't be tricked into thinking that's a whole forest. It's one single tree. And no, it's not some sort of optical illusion either. Let me explain. Underneath that soil, there is a complex network of roots that connects around 47,000 tree-like shapes you see above the ground. It's called the quaking aspen. Some of these trees are among the oldest and largest organisms in the world. 
Now, here's a good destination for all travelers, or maybe not so good after all. The most lightning-stricken area in the world, according to recent data released by NASA, is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. Out of all the days in a year, 300 of them feature thunderstorms in this location. What makes this area so unique, though, that storms happen so often? Well, it's because where cool mountain air meets the warm, moist breeze and generates electricity over the lake. The Eternal Flame Falls are located in upstate New York, near the Canadian border. In this region, there is a tiny waterfall with a big secret – a spark about 8 inches tall. Turns out there's a natural gas seat that provides fuel to the flame behind the waterfall. The waterfall provides enough coverage so that it stays lit pretty much every time. Hikers do enjoy to relight it if they see that it's been blown out. This phenomenon is actually quite common, but this one gained more popularity because it is younger than most. And it looks very good in pictures, let's be honest. I've heard of yellow sand, white sand, and even black sand here or there. But I've never heard of green beaches until now. Papacolia, also known as Green Sand Beach, is located in Hawaii and is one of the few beaches in the world that features green sand. The unique coloring comes from olivine rock that was formed when a nearby volcano erupted. Actually, in Hawaii, all the volcanoes are nearby. Move over green sands because some of the other beaches around the world can even glow at night. And it's completely natural. The culprit? A little thing called photoplankton, or microalgae, as they're sometimes called. They're basically little plants that contain chlorophyll and need sunlight in order to live and grow. Most photoplankton kinds are able to float in the upper part of the ocean, where the sunlight can still reach them beneath the water. When the photoplankton gets agitated by the movement of waves and currents, they emit light, which looks like some glow during the night. These special microorganisms are found on beaches in a lot of places around the world, such as the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and the Everglades. At the base of a mountain located just outside of Afton, Wyoming, is a little river called the Intermittent Spring. There are only three of this kind in the whole world, but what makes this little string of water so mysterious? Well, the fact that it starts and stops every few minutes. Scientists have yet to pinpoint precisely why this happens. They speculate that it's basically just a siphon effect that happens deep within the ground that causes the river to just start and stop so often. Should you ever be interested in checking it out, be sure to do so in the late summer, as that's when the intermittent spring is most active. Do you see the irony here? You can only see the spring in the summer? Okay, I'm done. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. You're out hiking along a highway surrounded by rainforest. There are no cars here, so all you hear is silence. The sky is thick with clouds. Now it starts raining heavily. As the first drops fall to the ground, you can hear a strange clicking light sound coming from far away. The rainforest seems to have come to life. The bushes and tree branches are slightly trembling. It feels like an earthquake. At this moment, the red crabs start running out of the forest. It looks like a red blanket moving towards the road. This blanket consists of hundreds of millions of red crabs. This phenomenon occurs every year on Christmas Island in Australia. Crabs fill all the roads. It's impossible to move by car or foot at this time. It's like a huge stream of a river that demolishes everything in its path. About 100 million crabs are trying to achieve their main goal in life – to reach the shore alive. For most of their lives, red crabs hide in burrows, in deep crevices of rocks. They stay there for almost a whole year, eating fruits, berries, fallen leaves, and other organic things. They try to live in damp, dark places to keep their body moist. Then the dry season ends. In October or November, when the rainy season starts, the crabs come out of their houses and make a journey of several days. They are guided not only by the rain, they come out of their burrows at a certain phase of the moon. A little later, you'll find out why they need it. In several days, male and female crabs migrate to the coast of the Indian Ocean. And now they are finally in place. Here they produce their offspring, 
all males begin to dig deep burrows on the shore. In these holes, the females will hatch their eggs. When the male crabs finish their job and pits are ready, they go back to the rainforests. The females begin to hatch the eggs. It takes 12 to 13 days. Then the crabs take their eggs and bring them to the water. They reach the shore and release their eggs into the water. The phase of the moon now plays an important role. The moon creates an indirect tide, making it milder than usual. This helps to give the offspring a better chance of survival. The eggs of the red crabs have hatched, and small larvae move to the sea. Within a month, they go through several stages of development and take the form of a tiny transparent crab, similar to a shrimp. These tiny creatures are called megalopae. They accumulate in puddles near the shore in this shrimp form. There, they grow the first layer of shell and go deep into the land to look for a safe place. They grow up and wait for the rainy season to run back to the shore and produce offspring. To keep the crabs safe, people close roads in those places where migration occurs. Welcome to the French island of Réunion, located in the Indian Ocean, 430 miles east of Madagascar. The magnificent shore, a stunning coral reef, golden sands, and green jungle. For a long time, this island was considered one of the best places for surfing. But then, it turned into one of the most terrible and dangerous places on Earth. And sea creatures are to blame. Throughout the island, you can see signs saying that swimming and surfing outside the Coral Lagoon are prohibited. This island has become famous all over the world because of the frequent shark attacks. You can dive into the water near the island and immediately feel like prey. From afar, you notice several fins. They belong to some of the most aggressive and dangerous sharks in the world, bull sharks, and they are approaching you. In the beginning, it may seem they are slow, but they deliberately create the illusion of sluggishness to make the prey relax. At the right moment, they become agile and fast. They are called bull sharks because of their short, flat face, similar to a bull. Their bodies are strong and tough. These predators like to push their heads and hit their prey or other sharks with their noses. From the 80s to the present day, more than 50 shark attacks on humans have been recorded. During this time, the probability of a shark attack on a person has increased almost 23 times. Scientists still don't know the exact reason for these incidents. It's possible the number of sharks has increased, leading to a lack of food. Therefore, sharks eat anything and see people as lunch. Another theory says the water temperature has changed, and sharks feel comfortable swimming in this region. But the most interesting hypothesis is related to the volcano. Réunion is a volcanic island. Because of the ground fluctuations, large parts of the rock fall from the slope of the volcano end up in the ocean. This makes the water cloudy, and such conditions are ideal for marine predators. No, I'm not swimming there. The next island we're going to visit also looks peaceful, but is way more dangerous than Shark Island. We're moving to Brazil. The small green island is located 25 miles off the coast of this country. There are no people here. It seems completely uninhabited at first glance. However, you can see traces of modern humans, the old lighthouse. It's been abandoned for a long time. Sometimes the Coast Guard comes to the lighthouse to check if everything is okay and if there are no strangers on the island. People are forbidden to set foot in here for their own good. The only inhabitants of the island are snakes. This piece of land is home to about 4,000 species of these reptiles. They hang on trees and crawl on the ground. Snakes have no enemies in their home, and they feed only on birds that visit the island for recreation during a long flight. But the worst thing is, these snakes are some of the most venomous in the world. Oh boy! The golden lancehead vipers are unique species that live only in this place. Snake Island was once part of the mainland of Brazil, but 10,000 years ago, the sea level rose, separated this place, and turned it into an island. The animals that lived here were completely isolated. For thousands of years, all living creatures were displaced by poisonous reptiles. Their poison wasn't developed immediately in the body. Evolution has given them this to hunt birds. They can catch prey with one bite. There is a legend that a pirate arrived on the island a long time ago to hide a treasure. He put the chest in the depths of the island and settled snakes here so they would scare away anyone who wanted to find the treasure. Hey, works for me. We're moving to Southeast Asia. Ramri Island is located near the coast of Myanmar. 
This place was especially dangerous in the first half of the 20th century. The island is covered with dense forests and swamps. This wet place is ideal for a saltwater crocodile. This animal can reach 23 feet in length, nearly twice as long as a passenger car. Hey, you want to take a ride on this croc? <laughs> Be my guest. And they can weigh nearly 2,000 pounds. These monsters are hiding among swamps and trees. You may not even notice them. At some point, they will come out and attack you. The exact number of crocodiles that lived on this island was unknown, but it was definitely a big number. Any living creature that enters their territory is regarded as food. Currently, the crocodile population on this island has decreased. It's not known whether there are any reptiles here at all anymore. Let's finish our journey on an island where animals are happy to see you. The unofficial name of this place is Pig Beach. It's located in the Bahamas. The island is inhabited by cute pigs. They sunbathe on the beach, walk through the jungle, and ask for food from tourists. But the coolest thing is that they can all swim perfectly. You can stay in a hotel on a nearby island, rent a boat, and come to visit the pigs. It's not known exactly where the pigs came from. According to one of the legends, they survived a shipwreck and swam to the island. In addition to pigs, you can also meet cats and goats there. But most folks come to meet Porky and his friends. You're on a ship when you notice some water foaming nearby. It looks as if a huge vessel just sunk there. But you don't see any debris. Steam is rising over the water, and large bubbles appear on the surface. In a couple of minutes, you see a small piece of land appear right in front of your eyes. It's releasing flames and lava. Millions of gallons of water evaporate in the mouth of the volcano. Frightened, you get away from this place. For the next three years, the small island covered with volcanoes will slowly be emerging from the water. Every day, it'll erupt and fill the sky with black ash. When the ash settles, it'll get mixed with the water and form the shore. This eruption lasted three years, and finally, by 1967, the island of Surtsey on the southern coast of Iceland was fully formed. Surtsey is one of the few islands that have emerged from the depths to the surface of the sea. But it's almost impossible to get here. The island has a unique ecological system, and scientists want to find out how it's going to develop without human influence. Only a few people from all over the world have permission to walk around on the island. For many decades, people's minds have been occupied with the mystery of Easter Island, a remote piece of volcanic soil far away in the Pacific Ocean. But our planet hosts thousands of such lonely islands. What is so peculiar about this one? The mystery is concealed not in the island itself, but giant stone statues covering it. Who created the world-famous huge stone heads? Did they serve any specific purpose? Rapa Nui, which is the name given to Easter Island by its first inhabitants, is the territory of Chile and is situated in the southern Pacific Ocean. And it is so far away that you can easily consider it one of the most distant places on the world map. The only transport that can take you there is a plane. If you want to get to this destination point, you will need to spend five hours on board flying from Santiago to Easter Island. The statues carry the name Moai. They started to be carved at some point between the 13th and 15th centuries. Rapa Nui statues are easily recognized thanks to their peculiar faces. They have long noses, wide chins, rectangular ears, heavy brows, and deeply set eyes. It is quite curious that the nostrils curl in the way fish hooks do. Firstly, people thought that the statues were made up only by their heads. But surprisingly, it turned out that there are full bodies that are attached to the heads. It was discovered during excavations in May 2012. The bodies were just hidden underground. Still, the heads of the statues, visible from the first sight, make up three-eighths of each statue's size. As for the arms, they were carved against the bodies, resting in different positions. 
Most statues, 834 out of 887, were carved from the material called tuff, which is, in fact, compressed volcanic ash. Curiously, all the statues except one faced inland. It means their backs are turned to the ocean. Perhaps the reason for that was the belief that the statues were the protectors of the villagers. That's why they overlooked the settlement. The only statues not fitting into this pattern can be found at Ahu Akivi, a sacred place for the people of Rapa Nui. People keep wondering how the statues of such a huge weight have been distributed all around the island. What's more, in 1722, visitors found a small local population between 1,500 and 3,000 people. How could it correlate with the hundreds of statues on the island? The mystery surrounding the way Rapa Nui people could move the statues challenged the researchers not letting them back off. In the 1980s, some of them decided to recreate a statue and check the possibility of moving it around. Several decades passed and another group of American scientists proved that the islanders could tie ropes encircling the huge statues and move them with a walking motion. They backed up their theory with practice, moving a full-size replica using this method. Actually, their idea can explain why Rapa Nui folklore states that the statues were walking with the help of magic. It explains the way the statues were transported to their designated places. Our next stop is Brazil, far from the center of Sao Paulo. That's where you can find an island that's almost impossible to get to. But if you succeed, you're unlikely to leave it. It's called Snake Island. There's no other place on the planet with such a high concentration of snakes. They are the only owners of the island since no other animals can survive among them. The Golden Lancehead. They are one of the most venomous species in the world. Their venom is very powerful and fast-acting. If you let this reptile bite a raw piece of meat, the place around the bite will start to melt. Count me out. Imagine you're on this island and the snakes don't bite you. The most interesting thing you can find there is an old lighthouse. It's hidden in the dense foliage of trees. People lived on the island a long time ago. Rumor has it that the last keepers were in the lighthouse when the snakes broke in. No one has lived there ever since. How these unique snakes appeared on the island is still a mystery. The most popular legend claims that a pirate came there a long time ago. He hid a treasure somewhere on the island. Then, he left the snakes in the spot where the chest was hidden. The pirate hoped the reptiles would scare people away from his gold coins and jewelry. Since then, a few snakes have managed to increase their population thousands of times. And some of them, reportedly, are wearing jewelry. No, not really. Even if you wanted to get to the island for some reason, the patrol services would stop you. Only a few people in special protective suits can get there to conduct scientific research. Susie gets here on a small boat. As soon as she steps on the ground, she turns on the live broadcast on her phone. She records dolls hanging on trees all over the island. They have different clothes, different sizes, and faces. There are about a dozen creepy toys on every tree. Rain and hot sun deform the toys' faces. They are covered with moss and greenery and have taken eerily scary forms. There are rumors they come to life at night. Wanna check? One of the subscribers writes, No problem, Susie agrees. The sun is going down below the horizon. Darkness falls on the forest. Susie is wandering among the trees. The moon lights her way. She makes a fire to get warm. At this moment, she hears a strange sound. She notices some movement out of the corner of her eye. The phone turns off. Susie looks up and sees one of the dolls, lit up by the flames, is turning its head in her direction. Susie screams and runs away from this place. Of course, the doll didn't move. You can notice a little bird sitting behind the toy's head. A few days later, Susie found out that one of the Mexico City locals had moved to the island in the 50s and filled it with toys. He collected dolls from landfills and canals around the island. He spent several days decorating every tree. In the beginning, it looked strange and exciting for tourists. Then, as the dolls began to age and rot, 
this place became more attractive for people. There are several legends about the reasons for his obsession. Okay, Susie's had enough of these mysteries and creepy places. Now she wants to admire something majestic that was created by nature. She arrives in California's Sequoia National Park, where the most giant trees in the world grow. She's looking with an open mouth at the biggest tree in the world, a giant sequoia. Its name is General Sherman, and it's about 2,000 years old. The volume of this tree is almost half the size of an Olympic swimming pool. Despite its age, it's not the oldest one. There are redwoods in the park that appeared 3,000 years ago. And the tallest tree in the world grows here, in California. It's a redwood that belongs to the sequoia family. It's called Hyperion. This is one-third of the Eiffel Tower's height. Just imagine what kind of view you can see from the tree's top. Now Susie is on the island of Madagascar. She's going to see unique baobab trees. They look like something has ripped them out of the ground, turned them upside down, and shoved them back in. Baobabs are some of the most beautiful trees in the world. Most of them are here in the Alley of Baobabs. But you can also find them in Australia and South Africa. Their tree trunks resemble sponges. They expand and absorb moisture during the rainy season. Elephants like to drink it. They tear off and chew the trunk's parts to quench their thirst. At night, flowers bloom on the baobabs. They smell like sour milk and attract bats. But the most interesting thing is that the baobab doesn't dry out and doesn't fall like other trees after the end of its life. It crumbles, settles, and leaves a pile of pieces on the ground. So, does the mysterious Devil's Gardens in the Amazon rainforest ring any bells? Eh, don't worry. It's not some spooky phenomenon. It's the work of some tiny but mighty insects called the lemon ants. These ants inject a natural herbicide, formic acid, into any other plant that is not the tree species that they call home. By doing this, they create a space for their treehouse saplings to grow, allowing the ant colony to expand as it occupies new nesting sites in the saplings. That's some efficient gardening, if you ask me. But don't be fooled. These devil gardens are not just a bunch of boring old trees. In fact, they are botanical anomalies that grow very slowly every year, and some of them are over 800 years old. Hello. Who knew ants could create such impressive and long-lasting structures? Of course, the rainforest is still one of the most diverse ecosystems on Earth, with a remarkable diversity of plant life. But it's fascinating to see the control ants can have over their environment, creating single-species structures in such a complex ecosystem. But where does the name Devil's Garden come from? We know ants are to blame, but is there something else hiding in the Amazon rainforest? Well, picture this. You're strolling along, taking in the lush foliage, when suddenly you stumble upon a clearing. But wait, there's something strange about this patch of land. There's no vegetation, just a handful of trees standing alone in the dirt. What's going on here? It's easy to understand why people came up with this name after seeing the weird stretch of vegetation. And as humans do, they came up with quite an impressive legend to back up the story. It was said that the inhabitant of this eerie oasis was a shape-shifting evil spirit. Like me. Heh, <laughs> just kidding. This little guy may have looked like a misshapen person walking on one hoof and one human foot. But don't be fooled. He supposedly had a whole bag of tricks up his sleeve including the ability to transform into someone you know and lead you down the path to doom. Hey, it's just a myth, but you have to admit it was quite convincing, right? Clever landscaping ants aside, there are a lot of unsolved mysteries hidden in the Amazon rainforest. Like its unusual geoglyphs, for example. Humans have been getting creative with the Earth's surface for ages. Geoglyphs are just one of the many ways we've left our mark on this planet. Basically, we take some sand or stones, move them around a bit, and voila! We've got ourselves a funky design that pops against the backdrop of the ground. A new study found that the area was home to up to 1 million people before Columbus first arrived in the New World back in 1492. That's a lot of people, and they left behind some pretty cool stuff. 
The Amazon rainforest is already amazing, with 1 in 10 known species in the world living there, and 1 in 5 of Earth's birds. But did you know that over the past few decades, archaeologists have discovered evidence of numerous large complex societies that may have inhabited Amazonia? It turns out that the Amazon rainforest was not just a pristine wilderness, but a hub of human activity as well. These South American geoglyphs are particularly interesting. They're these huge structures that combine square, circular, and hexagonal shapes. Archaeologists have found very few remains of habitation inside the enclosures, which suggests they were not settlements. Instead, the most likely explanation is that they were used for ceremonial gatherings. The exact function of these structures is still a mystery, though. To find out how widespread human settlements were in the Amazon, scientists focus on the basin of the upper reaches of the Tapius River, a major tributary of the Amazon. Using satellite images, they discovered 81 new archaeological sites in the upper Tapios Basin, with a total of 104 earthworks. That means there is no gap in the network of earthworks spanning across Amazonia's southern rim. When researchers conducted ground surveys of 24 of these sites, they found evidence that the sites they visited were once inhabited. These sites dated from 1250 to 1500 CE and ranged from about 100 to 1300 feet wide. The largest were typically hexagonal fortified settlements, suggesting a certain degree of planning and uniformity in their construction. Based on the size and distributions of the earthworks, the researchers suggested that similar settlements may have extended over about 154,000 square miles of the southern rim of the Amazon, supporting a population of between 500,000 and 1 million people in late pre-Columbian times. Of course, the new study doesn't mean the Amazon rainforest was ever a teeming megalopolis. It's still mostly uncharted. So, we have no idea how pre-Columbian populations were distributed across Amazonia. But it's exciting to learn about these ancient societies and the cool things they left behind. The scientists plan to do more excavations in the Upper Tapios Basin to refine their understanding of the cultural developments there. Who knows what they'll find next? Maybe a lost city full of treasure and adventure. Also hidden in the vast habitat of the Amazon is this next quirky creature. Ever heard of the Amazon Pink River Dolphins? Unfortunately, there is still so much we don't know about them. First things first, though, let's talk about what they look like. So picture this, a small, light-colored dolphin with a pink nose and lips. Ah, they're the Barbie of dolphins! Aside from that, they look like regular dolphins with plump bodies, bulbous foreheads, skinny snouts, chubby cheeks, and small eyes. They can be found in countries like Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. They're also the only species of river dolphin found in the Amazon River. Unfortunately, these little guys are officially critically endangered species, so there are not many specimens available that scientists can study. No other name is more famous when it comes to exploring the Amazon rainforest than that of Percy Fawcett. He dedicated his life to exploring the area in search of a lost city. And not just any city, but an ancient, mysterious city that he called Z. Sounds like something straight out of an Indiana Jones movie, right? Percy was born in England in 1867 and had quite a career before he started exploring. But he didn't let his profession hold him back from following his dreams of exploring South America. In fact, he made seven expeditions to the Amazon between 1906 and 1924, each time getting closer to uncovering the secrets of Z. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how large the Amazon rainforest is. How big is it? I asked myself. It's so big that you could fit the whole of the UK and Ireland into it a whopping 17 times. That's a lot of trees and animals to navigate through. But Percy was up for the challenge. Despite his best efforts, Percy never found the lost city of Z, and sadly, he disappeared during his final expedition in 1925. But his legacy lived on through the years, inspiring many to become archaeologists and explorers themselves. In fact, a book called The Lost City of Z was written about Percy's adventures and was even made into a movie.
It's not all hidden mysteries and wild nature out there. There are around a million indigenous folks living their best lives in the Amazon rainforest. That's right, they hunt, fish, farm, and even have access to Western medicine and education. But here's the kicker. Not all of these folks are keen on socializing with outsiders. And can you blame them? For years, loggers, miners, and ranchers have been, shall we say, behaving badly toward these communities. It's no wonder that some tribes have chosen to stay isolated and protect themselves from the dangers of the outside world. In fact, in 2018, Brazilian authorities were able to snap a photo of a man dubbed the indigenous man in the hole. He's the last remaining member of his tribe. But don't feel too bad for him. He's doing just fine on his own and has made it pretty clear that he's not interested in outside visitors. The authorities still leave him some seeds and tools, though, so it's not all bad news. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. You've just reached your perfect spot on a deserted beach. It's so quiet here that you start to doze off. But as you open your eyes, you are shocked. Wait a minute, is that an actual house that's just been washed up on the shore? It may sound like the beginning of a sci-fi novel, but not if you live near this beach in El Salvador. There's a mysteriously abandoned house there that looks as if it's just been washed ashore. How did this villa end up there? How long has it been here without anyone noticing it? This mysterious construction is 46 miles south of El Salvador's capital, San Salvador. Locals say the building used to be a hotel called Puerto Ventura. At the time it was built, its main attraction was the fact that it was really close to the sea. Unfortunately, the engineering behind it wasn't well planned out, all because locals didn't need any official permission to start the construction. The hotel was too close to the water and dangerously exposed to the elements. The Roman-style villa is now a mere 50 feet from the edge of the sea when the tide is low. It can only be accessed in the morning, because later, the tides fill the first floor with salt water. What's now left of the hotel looks like the ruins of a two-story house. The front part is very impressive, with Roman-type pillars. It also has wide windows on the second floor. You can still see parts of the iron structures and remains of what used to be the gateway to the second floor. There are some bleachers at the top of the building. They are sometimes used by tourists. More and more people are now browsing the area, taking photos, even though the building is obviously not safe for climbing. There's little information on how long it's been sitting in its current location, but some locals say it's been there for at least 20 years. It had remained a local secret for years, before it was discovered by a TikTok user in 2021. But that doesn't answer the question, how did the hotel end up in another location altogether? This is where things become a little fuzzy. While some locals say that the building was abandoned decades ago, others claim it was deserted after Hurricane Mitch hit the area back in 1998. Hurricane Mitch was one of the most dangerous weather phenomena to ever hit Central America. During the storm, The winds traveled at 178 miles per hour, and the hurricane itself lasted for about 15 hours. It was also the cause of a huge amount of rainfall, which resulted in floods and many dangerous landslides. Being built so close to the shoreline, the former hotel had little chance of surviving the extreme weather conditions. So, it must have been literally displaced. After sitting under the sun, you might start dreaming of some snowballs getting washed ashore. You know, to even out the temperature. I'm not kidding. This strange natural phenomenon did happen back in 2016. It resulted in about 11 miles of the coast of the Gulf of Ab in West Siberia getting covered with huge snowballs. Because of the low temperatures, small pieces of ice started to form in the water. Afterward, the wind and waves rolled them into giant snowballs. Some of them were the size of a tennis ball, but others were up to three feet wide. A 2004 Harley-Davidson night train motorcycle popped up ashore on a British Columbia beach back in 2012. It was neatly packed inside a shipping container. It took some time to do it, but the owner was eventually traced down. 
His name was Ikuyo Yokoyama, and he lost his motorcycle after a tsunami struck Japan on March 11, 2011. To get to its final destination, the Harley-Davidson traveled more than 4,000 miles. To celebrate its long journey, Yokoyama donated the bike to the Harley-Davidson Museum in Milwaukee. It's been on display there ever since, in case you want to visit. This strange phenomenon made it look as if someone spilled dish soap all over the beach. But it does happen pretty often in Queensland. Sea foam covers the shore there a couple of times each year. It mostly happens after a storm, when ocean waves move dissolved organic matter around. It's basically like a giant ice cream maker. After Cyclone Debbie back in March of 2017, some beaches actually needed to be closed because of huge amounts of white foam. The wind even brought some of that foam to the nearby towns, making locals believe it was snowing. Would you be surprised to see a 6 by 6 foot rusty metal die washed ashore on your local beach? Because back in 2017, people in Coeur d'Alene in Idaho sure were. It turned out to be an old storage tank. Someone decided to spice it up a bit by adding some white spots to make it look like a dye. In 1992, thousands of rubber duckies got stranded at sea after a large container ship that was transporting them was hit by a wave. As you can imagine, the ducks started popping up all over the world in Hawaii, Alaska, South America, Australia, in Europe, and even in the Arctic. It's estimated that a couple hundred of those unlucky rubber ducks are still out there. Interestingly, they turned out to be very useful to scientists. Based on their movements, researchers can monitor the direction of water currents. If you happen to like dinosaurs, you'll be happy to know seawaters can also bring ashore some fossils. In 2018, a large dinosaur jawbone ended up on the coast of Lilstock Beach in Somerset, England. It used to belong to a dinosaur called Ichthyosaurus. Thanks to this finding, scientists were able to make an impressive discovery. Before, they thought the ichthyosaurus could reach a maximum length of about 69 feet. But after they studied the jawbone, they ended up recalculating the creature's size. They concluded that the ichthyosaurus could grow up to 85 feet. The megalodon was the largest predator in our planet's history. It lived almost all over the globe, except near the poles. How do we know that? because megalodon teeth keep appearing on beaches every now and then. One staggering megalodon tooth, which was way over 20 inches long, was discovered in a river in Croatia. Since these creatures have been extinct for about 3 million years, their teeth are highly prized by fossil hunters. A giant Lego man that washed ashore is something I never thought I'd hear about. And it turns out it didn't happen just once. There were four of these giant Lego men in total, each around 8 feet tall. One was found in England and one in the Netherlands, while the other two popped up in Florida and California. It was surely not a coincidence, and after some research, people found out that a Dutch artist was behind this. Ego Leonard started this project as a personal statement campaign. A short film was even made about this, and it was called No Real Than You Are. This sentence was written on each of the four Lego men put to sea. A bundle of over 50 letters was washed ashore in New Jersey on a beach in Atlantic Highlands back in 2012. It happened shortly after Hurricane Sandy had struck the area. A 14-year-old boy found the letters and gave them to his mom. She was so touched by them that she decided to carefully dry and return them to their owner. The letters were the correspondence of two people named Dorothy and Lynn. They were dated between 1942 and 1948. The last was written a week before their wedding. With the help of an online genealogy site, the woman reached Dorothy and returned the letters to the 88-year-old woman who was living in a retirement home. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. At a distance of 640 light years from the sun, scientists discovered planet WASP-76b, where it rains iron. The planet is very close to its sun and always turned to it in the same side. The term is tidally locked. The temperature on the sunny side is so high that metals melt and evaporate there. The other half of the planet is cool enough so that metals condense again and fall down as rain. 
Speaking of tidal locks, our moon is the same way. There's no dark side to our satellite, it's just always turned to us with one side. When the moon happens to be in between the Earth and the Sun, what we call its dark side becomes brightly lit. We just can't see it from our planet. Hmm, figures. A recent study claims that the moon has a tail. And every month, it wraps around our planet like a scarf. A slender tail made up of millions of atoms of sodium follows Earth's natural satellite. And our planet regularly travels directly through it. Meteor strikes blast these sodium atoms out of the moon's surface and further into space. You won't believe it, but the moon seems to be shrinking. Earth's natural satellite is now 150 feet smaller than it used to be hundreds of millions of years ago. The reason for this phenomenon might be the cooling of the moon's insides. It could also explain the quakes shaking the surface of our planet's natural satellite. Astronomers have recently found out that Mars is seismically active. Mars quakes occur there on a regular basis. For several days every month, the moon remains between the sun and our planet. That's when Earth's gravity picks up that sodium tail. Our planet drags it into a long stripe that wraps around its atmosphere. This lunar tail is totally harmless. It's also invisible to the human eye, 50 times dimmer than what you can perceive. But on those rare days, high-powered telescopes can spot its faint yellowish glow in the sky. The tail looks like a gleaming spot that's five times the moon's full diameter. Turns out there are plenty of planets in the universe, and even in the Milky Way galaxy, that have liquid or frozen water on them. The closest one is within our solar system. It's Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Scientists are almost sure that underneath its frozen surface, there's an actual ocean of water. But it's too soon to be hyped about possible life on such planets. Liquid water is only one of many things that have to come together for life to appear on a planet. A star in the galaxy GSN 069 is likely to turn into a planet the size of Jupiter in the next trillion years. It might happen because of the star's regular encounters with a black hole. First, astronomers noticed unusual X-ray bursts that were strangely bright. They went off every 9 hours. After studying this phenomenon for some time, the scientists realized it was a star moving in a unique orbit around a black hole. The dazzling flashes? It was the material getting slurped off the star's surface by the black hole. It turned out that over millions of years, the black hole had already transformed the red giant into a white dwarf. And the process isn't going to stop whatsoever. Astronomers have found some traces of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. On our planet, this gas, colorless and flammable, is often found where microbes live. No wonder a new theory suggests that there might be life on Venus. But even if there was some life on the evening star, it could have only appeared in its atmosphere. Probably no living organism would be able to survive the planet's extreme environment. Venus's surface is extremely dry, there's no liquid water on the planet, and the pressure there is 90 times greater than that on Earth's surface. The temperatures often rise higher than 900 degrees. That's hot enough to melt some metals. As for vacations there, I'll pass. In fact, there's a place millions of light years away where there's a whole floating space cloud made entirely of water. There's so much of it that we could fill all our oceans 140 trillion times over. Slightly more than what we need. Water on Earth is actually a puzzle shrouded in mystery and covered with riddles. The most popular theory is that it was brought to our planet by icy comets and asteroids that left behind not only mighty craters, but the liquid substance thanks to which we can now thrive. But in space, there's a whole lot of organic matter, and under specific conditions, it could yield so much water, it would be enough to fill our oceans thousands of times over. Researchers conducted an experiment in which they heated this organic matter and obtained clear water and oil. If this is confirmed in future studies, it could mean that even oil appeared on Earth not only thanks to fossilized remains of living beings, but came from outer space as well. And yet, there might just be about 6 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone. The latest data has shown that every fifth sun-like star can have at least one planet in its habitable zone. And not just any planet, mind you. It has a rocky core and surface, and it's of comparable size to the Earth. Being inside the habitable zone of its star, 
such a planet would have high chances of becoming home to living creatures, microbes at least. And if there are billions of these planets in our galaxy, you could safely say that at least one of them is not only habitable, but inhabited already. And now, multiply this by the number of galaxies in the universe, also considering that many of them are much bigger than the Milky Way. This gives us billions upon billions of sun-like stars and Earth-like planets, and some of them are surely more like ours than others. And get this, we might be able to walk upright because of supernova explosions. About 2.5 million years ago, a supernova sent cosmic rays to our planet. They triggered a series of electrical storms in the Earth's atmosphere, which turned into thunderstorms. Those in turn caused wildfires in Northeast Africa, where our earlier ancestors lived. Fires turned the forest area into a savanna, the atmospheric pressure changed, and our ancestors had to stand on two legs to survive. The biggest explosion since the Big Bang was registered in 2019. This happened in the Ophiuchus Cluster, which unites thousands of galaxies. According to scientists, the blast was equal to 20 billion billion that's 18 zeros, megaton explosions happening once a millisecond for 240 million years. Um, I'll have to trust that. My math is not that good. In 2019, NASA's InSight lander, whose goal was to study the interior of Mars, registered the first Mars quake ever. These quakes were coming fast, about two per day. Most of them were tiny. You wouldn't even feel them if they happened on our planet. So far, more than 300 Mars quakes have been detected. Those are the first quakes on any space body other than Earth and the Moon. Another mysterious phenomenon discovered by the mission was bizarre magnetic pulses. They occurred every midnight around the lander. It's still unclear what those pulses were. Maybe after midnight, they're going to let it all hang out, or something. Pluto's atmosphere rises much higher above the surface of the dwarf planet than, let's say, Earth's. It also has more than 20 layers, all of them freezing cold and extremely condensed. Remember the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs on Earth? Hey, I wasn't around then, but who could forget? There might have been another space show that ended badly for at least 75% of all life on our planet in the past. Roughly 360 million years ago, a supernova explosion occurred about 65 light years away from us, and the cosmic rays sent by it swept away the ozone layer of our pretty blue ball. Wow, tough neighborhood. The moon is the second brightest object in our sky. At the same time, among other astronomical bodies, it's one of the dimmest and least reflective. Our natural satellite only seems bright because it's so close to Earth. For comparison, our planet looks much brighter when you look at it from space. It's because clouds, ice, and snow reflect way more light than most types of rock. Triton, Neptune's moon, has all its surface covered with several layers of ice. If this satellite replaced our current moon, the night sky would get seven times brighter. The closer the moon is to the horizon, the larger it looks. This phenomenon is called the moon illusion. One of the theories explaining it claims that the atmosphere plays the role of a magnifying glass, which makes the moon look bigger. In reality, if the atmosphere had a say in it, the moon would actually look smaller, not bigger. Most experts believe that the illusion is created by your own mind. It can increase the moon's size more than twice. When Earth's satellite is high up in the sky, you don't have any visual cues about how far away it is. But when it's near the horizon, you can see objects surrounding it in detail. It makes the moon look larger. But it's just one of the many theories explaining the phenomenon. By the way, you can trick yourself out of this illusion if you bend down and look at the moon upside down through your legs. Two or three years ago, an asteroid was pulled into Earth's orbit and started to travel around the planet. Even though it's no larger than an average car, it's still a big deal. Out of more than one million asteroids astronomers know about, it's only the second one to orbit our planet. Called 2020 CD3, it's our temporary mini-moon. It won't be with Earth for long, though. The asteroid is following a random orbit and is slowly drifting away. 
temporarily captured objects, such as 2020's CD3, are rare. They need to have specific direction and speed to be caught by Earth's gravitational pull. Otherwise, they either crash into the planet or fly in another direction. A transient lunar phenomenon is one of the most enigmatic things happening on the Moon. It's a short-lived light, color, or some other change on the satellite's surface. Most commonly, it's random flashes of light. Astronomers have been observing this phenomenon since the 1950s. They've noticed that the flashes occur randomly. Sometimes, they can happen several times a week. After that, they disappear for several months. Some of them don't last longer than a couple of minutes. But there have been those that continued for hours. The year was 1969, one day before Apollo 11 landed on the moon. One of the mission participants noticed that one part of the natural satellite was more illuminated than the surrounding landscape. It looked as if that area had a kind of fluorescence to it. Unfortunately, it's still unclear if this phenomenon was connected with the mysterious lunar flashes. There might be more metals, for example, titanium or iron, in lunar craters than astronomers used to think. The main problem with this finding? It contradicts the main theory about how the moon was formed. That theory says that Earth's natural satellite was spun off from our planet after a collision with a massive space object. But then, why does Earth's metal-poor crust have much less iron oxide than the moon's? It might mean the moon formed from the material lying much deeper inside our planet. Or these metals could have appeared when the molten lunar surface was slowly cooling down. The moon's gravity is about 17% of that on Earth. If you weighed 200 pounds on our home planet, on the moon, your weight would decrease to a mere 34 pounds. You would also be able to carry stuff six times heavier than what you can carry on Earth. It would be easier to walk on the moon's surface, but it would be more dangerous too. Your feet inside a heavy spacesuit would sink into the lunar soil up to six inches deep. But let's imagine you decided to skip the tedious process of walking by leaping through the air. Then you'd likely lose control of your jumps in no time. Plus, the moon's surface is littered with deep craters. It would be a tough feat to avoid all of them. Not so long ago, astronomers discovered a massive blob of some mysterious substance. It was hidden under the surface of the moon's far side. Its mass was the same as that of a pile of metal five times larger than the big island of Hawaii. The enigmatic something lies almost 200 miles beneath an enormous crater that appeared in the lunar surface billions of years ago. The blob likely has something to do with a super collision. It might be the metal core of the object that hit the moon back then. Scientists can't wait to lay their hands on the discovery. It could explain lots of things about the South Pole Aitken Crater, the largest known in the solar system. If it was on Earth, its oval-shaped basin would stretch from Washington, D.C. to Texas. There's no air on Earth's natural satellite. But then, how can it be rusting? Scientists have discovered the presence of hematite on the moon, and it's a kind of rust. A special NASA research instrument examined the light reflected off the moon's surface. It turned out that the composition of the satellite's poles was very different from the rest of it. The moon's surface is dotted with iron-rich rocks, but without oxygen and liquid water, rust can't appear. Solar winds add to the mystery. They bombard the moon with hydrogen, and hydrogen makes it much more difficult for hematite to form. But even though the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, it still has some trace amounts of oxygen. Its source is our planet's upper atmosphere. Earth also protects the moon from almost 100% of solar winds, although not all the time. And even though our natural satellite is bone dry, there might be water ice in the shadowed craters on its far side. The moon isn't a perfect sphere. It's shaped like an egg. Plus, the satellite's center of mass is a bit more than a mile off its geometric center.
the Earth and the Moon are gradually drifting apart, as slowly as your fingernails grow. This is the flip side of our satellite's gravitational force. The Moon creates tides in the Earth's oceans. They pull back at the Moon and make it speed up. This, in turn, moves the satellite to a higher orbit. In prehistoric times, the Moon was way closer to our planet than it is now. Luckily, we aren't going to lose the Moon. The farther away it moves, the weaker its gravitational pull becomes. It means that soon, our planet won't be pushing the Moon away with such a force. There's very little activity going on inside the Moon. Plus, there's almost no atmosphere around. That's why scientists can trace impact craters littering the satellite surface back billions of years. While dating the craters, astronomers discovered that the Moon, along with our planet, went through a late heavy bombardment about 4 billion years ago. This event is also known as the Lunar Cataclysm. This interval lasted several hundred millions of years. During it, an unusually large number of asteroids collided with Earth, Mercury, Mars, and Venus. There might be a labyrinth of lava tubes on the Moon. Not long ago, astronomers received the results of an underground lunar topography. They discovered a massive cave under the satellite's surface, about 30 miles long and 60 miles wide. The cave's likely to be the result of 3 billion year old volcanic activity. After streams of lava hardened, they created a thick hard crust on the outside. But inside, lava kept flowing, melting the rock and forming tunnels and caves. Countless pits in the moon's surface, discovered by NASA, might be the openings to lava tubes. The moon's orbit around the Earth isn't a circle, it's an oval. That's why the distance between our planet and the satellite varies from over 225,000 miles to more than 250,000 miles. There's very little seismic activity going on inside the Moon. Yet, many moonquakes caused by our planet's gravitational pull sometimes happen several miles below the surface. After that, tiny cracks and fractures appear in the satellite's surface, and gases escape through them.